Hi, it's Amain, Zavano, Anastasia and Candice. Um, just want to ask you a few questions today. Um, I know that you have a very supportive family and extended family and it's going to be interesting to tease that out. Uh, just for those watching, um, Caleb is our first grade halfback, has been for the last two years and we want to talk about the aspects of his rugby career. Uh, before we start though, um, I'm just wondering, could you tell us a little bit, if Simone Zavano, about your family, your, your four children and then we could move on from there. Oh, well, we have four children. We have the eldest son, Joe, who lives down in um, Narra area. Our daughter, Yala, who's in Melbourne, and obviously Caleb here in Sydney. And um, our daughter here, Candice. Um, baby. Our little girl. No, well, look, both our boys played rugby. All right, okay. School rugby. School rugby, St. Eddie's. Our son played actually first grade rugby league for Queen Blues United down in Canberra, and he All actually okay. trained with the uh, under-20 Raiders at a short period of time but then he went into another sport which he ventured into was um, wakeboarding. Wakeboarding? Out of rugby, yeah. So In Canberra? Did they have waves in Canberra? Is that on Lake Billy Griffin? Or? I stand on the long way river. <laughs> <laughs> Not down the premium. How <laughs> 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 Lake Billy Griffin. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, with rugby, um, yeah, Caleb started, well, as a junior from third grade, I believe, he played soccer and then from soccer, we, um, he started his uh, rugby career in fourth grade when he went to school Saint at Eddie's. St Edmunds College in Canberra. Mm -hmm. And um, so from St Edmunds from year four to year 12 and then he, uh, he had his ups and downs in, in football at school. Um, but always dedicated, yep. always very loyal. He just, he wanted to be an Australian player. Yeah. He, um, he uh, played the uh, first 15 in year 11 and then from year 11, uh, yeah, played first 15 year 11 and then in year 12 he played second 15 but but he was the captain of uh, the second 15 in year 12 but from year 12, uh, from the second, yeah, from that year sorry, like with his rugby career uh, starting off, um, he became the state halfback from second 15 not first 15. That's all right, isn't it? It sounds a little bit like Nick Bar Jones. He's he started off in soccer, did make the first fifteen, and not to represent Australia and be captain of Australia. Yeah, yeah, so that's how he sort of started all back and had to work his way up. Okay. Um, I guess the other part too is you know, I know you've also got uh, okay. Italian heritage, um, yeah. <laughs> Lovato. Um, what we haven't led into yet is like is that is that the Italians are worried about family and things like that. Is that an important part? You think of what you want for your own family and extended family too? Like I believe family is the most important thing you can have. I, I believe family, uh, when, you, when you're there, uh, when someone needs you, you, your family's there for you. And um, with uh, our family that we have, we try to keep it nice and tight, but even the friends around us are just as important. We've got a, we've got a great friend group that we call our family that support us as we need it because we're both from very large families and both families have the same structure where we're very close or we believe in family. As we all get older it just becomes about your own and supporting when you've got four kids. And that leads into I guess now it's about is how you got into fostering because uh, how long have you been doing it and B, how many children have you fostered them? Been doing it for 16 years and we've had 45. This is number 45. Um, how did we get into it? When I was young, I always wanted to go to South Africa and work in the orphanages as, like, I always thought of that's where I'd go. And then what happened one day is we found a little boy, he was about five years old, walking along the street. So when I stopped, we asked him where he was going. He said he was leaving home because his parents didn't love him. They didn't even know he'd gone. Put him in the car and Caleb turned around to him and he looks at him and he goes, what's up, mate? And he goes, oh, my parents don't love me. And Caleb put his arm around him and said, that's okay. My mum's got enough love for you. And that's just really how it all started. I left the ANZ Bank after 20 years, walked into docks and just registered as a foster carer. So what about for you, Savannah? How, you, how did you find that when Simone... Said, so, look, I'm going to do this. Is that I support it 100%. Okay. Yeah, which, uh, I, look, I'd, I'd um, yeah, 100%. Because, uh, like Simone said earlier, we both come from big families. Um, look, I'm an uncle of 40 nephews and nieces and probably 30 great nephews and nieces. So, 
you still have well, a big I thought family. that would be a, a big extended. So you oh. haven't got a Italian background, or what, what's your... Oh, I don't, I don't know. I've got African. Oh, right, my okay. my, my great-great-grandfather is a Negro. Right. Um, but my grandmother on my mother's side, her name was Bernasconi, so we think there is Italian there somewhere. Yeah, we I really don't no, know. I just, I, I just leave that coming... Yeah, growing up with Italians are great having about the family yep. being like with Australia tend to be more single single yeah, yeah. family orientated, yeah, immediate immediate straight family. But we don't, we don't want to get into that part of it also. So with the children, how um, how long do they stay with you for? Is that depending on It depends. When I first started, I was very naive. So we sort of like went into it with our eyes now closed. Now I don't do long term care. So what's long term? Long term, long -term is till they're eighteen years old. I went. I now am a crisis and a pre concurrent carer, so I work specifically with newborn babies, um, which is something I love. So what's the longest period then? I could do anywhere from one day to twelve months, okay. but normally the average is about six six months. So how do you find emotionally coping with that now? Then? It's that wonderful. Like some of them, but you when get, you have to give them up, I mean that's. It's, it's a grieving period, always a grieving period, but I wouldn't change it. Luckily, we've got a couple of the parents that we still maintain relationships with. Is not many. So really there's not many. Do you keep contact with any of the children? Yes, one in particular, Aidan. Um, we're very close to his parents. Um, the little one, the little girl? Um, uh, we see Tanielle, another little baby that we had. We keep in touch with her. But there's a lot of them that don't want anything to do with you because it's too close to home you for them. You know too much. We know too much. So, so getting back to your own children, I guess you talked about that long-term care part, is how did they, they react to sharing us? their parents with other children? They love, I mean, yeah, well, yeah we can be a little bit selfish, because you know. Well, our kids is um, like, we'd, uh, I'd come home and, because I do a fair bit of work away out of town, those days when we started in the early state part of the years to fostering with um, Caleb and Job and Yala growing up, just just watching them giving love and affection to the outsiders that we brought in. That makes them who they are today. You know, well, that so makes them who they are today. They're kind, considerate, they're, they've got empathy for, for all types of people. But also, it's like having a new baby. If we were to have had another baby, It'd be the same thing. They're included in your family unit, um, and I think even now, as they're older, they've enjoyed it even more. And, I, and I, um, I've got to say this too: like in in that process, like I, I remember Caleb used to make a few remarks on. He'd say, "Oh, Dad, instead of you buying this or buying that, you should put some of your money towards the third world countries." You know, like, and that's coming from Caleb. That so that empathy's gone. Yeah. So is that right, Candice? You think? Uh, I do. You agree with that? Like, do you like sharing with yeah. Anastasia? A bit hard, isn't it? Huh? You like hanging around? Yeah. yeah. What are the things that really blow you away about you know, fostering children? What are the highest you like? You know, is that just a feeling of great satisfaction or love? I mean, what emotion it does it take you to? You know? I, I believe when you look into a child's eye and you see that spark in the eye, that's, 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 that's really important. And yeah. I don't know. It's just watching them smile and giggle and you can see that they've got emotion because a lot of these children don't get don't have emotion because they have no connection to a yeah. human being if they're left too long but yeah watching them thrive so it's like a tough love for them like, yeah. for them to change yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and you know like the like this little one here's just coming out was she's only 4 days old but just watching her grow is just like watching your own children grow Yep. And giving her the love and the bonding. You know. So, what's your philosophy about like disciplining, not disciplining, but yeah, manage the children? Like, you have, yeah, you know, just all about love, or is it, yeah, you know, like some of these children have difficult backgrounds and things like that? How do you say, no, I don't expect you to do that? So, or, you know. You just have to, you have to believe that what you do is in the best interest of the child. So, believing in the parents, if they're decent enough. Um, that they've got the ability to change because sometimes people just need the support and the love themselves, so even as an adult. So is that like earning their respect? So or you're you, vice versa? Yeah, it is My a word. bit earning their respect. That you know we're grateful okay. to be looking after their child. We hope that they feel the same way. 
And to uh, trust you. And to trust well, us. It's a big thing to take by uh, most choice. Uh, yeah. With, uh, you know, Candice and too, I mean, that we talked about, um, you know, being involved in it. You've just, I know you've got your short hair there. Candice, you want to tell us about what you've just done? Yeah. Oh, no, you can, you can just mm -hmm. say that you uh, The world, what was it, the world's greatest show? Yes. Did you do that? Yeah. And you got a few sponsors? Yes. And I've heard you got a sponsor, Paramount Rugby Club, because you've done really well. <laughs> hey? yeah. So how much money did you raise? $3,000. $3,000. $3, That's very good. Hey? And one of your brothers still owes your money? Do we have to talk about that? Or mum and dad put in for you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, did you choose to do that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, she did. So, did many of your school do that? You know, in, you're uh, in third just class. a couple. Yeah. But no girls. No girls. She was the only girl. She was the only girl. Okay. So did, where did you have it cut at school, or did you do yes, it? Yes, at school. Okay. So did you go into the local, make it into the local paper? No, we didn't actually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yeah. too well organised actually. Mm -hmm. mm. Wasn't wasn't too political like. Oh no no! I was just wondering. You know, uh, you know, I've done a few of those. But I've never done myself because I my hair would never grow back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to do that. So your, your hair's just so yeah. lovely. Um, so that was, that was, that was a, that's a great a great attribute to have too. Yep. So what do you want to do when you get older, you know? I don't know. Yeah, be a school teacher or a nurse? Or the other part too, what are, what, are, what are the difficult times then? You know, the hard times, are there hard times in that or there is? Plenty. <laughs> when the house is a mess and they all walk in after a day's work and think that's where it all ends and football <laughs> boots are there with all the dirt on them and the work boots. There's lots of different things. They wear just like every other family where the kids are in crisis, you know. Um, they're not happy for one reason or another and you have to deal with that. It's just all the normalities. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's normal. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, I guess the other part too is, you know, like with the background things like that, where did you, where did you and Savannah be? In Queenbeam. And struggle Town Australia, mate. Yeah, right. right. At the Queenbean Show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what's the pick-up line for a Queenbean Show? Nice well, there was no, it? there was no pick-up line, mate. It was just a <laughs> love at first sight. We, we, yeah, well, you can more or less, I, I seen Simone in the distance and then she just disappeared, then I didn't see her, and then I seen her 12 months later, I met her in the, in the, in the, Queen in the Park. town park. I made her mind introduce me to Simone. Okay. And, um, yeah, and then, oh, I mean, that's a long time ago, but um, then we just sort of, become friendly and I think that those days I done her um I was asked yeah. to do her uh, debutante ball or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah so she's only fifteen at the time. So Yeah we were pretty young when we started dating. <laughs> yeah. So soulmates? I don't know. I don't know what soulmates are. I just think So the other part too is you, you, you when you first drove a HD Holden. Yes. I cannot believe you drove a HD hold. I had a HD hold and paid five hundred dollars for it, mate. <laughs> Actually, the wheels we put on it were worth more than the car. <laughs> okay, so from there it has blossomed. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, which is great. So, getting back to, to, to Caleb, I said, you know, what he's achieved and things like that. Him before, so he, he played state and then he's offered a, a, a chance to go overseas and play football. Yep. Yeah. Back in 2008, after school rugby and, and, and representative football, we, he, we went over to uh, Italy and um, we went out for a holiday at the same process and um, he um, had a trial run there in Italy with a club called Mogliano, Veneto Mogliano, and it's just up the road from Treviso, you know, and um, he, uh, they were happy with the way he performed at, at, at that level and then um, he was offered a... Um, an opportunity to stay there and play under 19s, um, but uh, Caleb thought the concrete uh, the <laughs> thought that the rugby was um, a bit slow, a bit basic. Yes, and uh, he wouldn't have gone forward in his footy in his career and things like yeah. that. So when did he start playing for Vi his Vikings? Did oh, look, he played for the Vikings. Oh, gee, he played for Queenie Whites. But only then for a year, I think. For, for a year, and under the so Glenn Christini. So when did Glenn Christini come into that? Glenn Christini, yeah, and Caleb, Caleb was playing for the Quemium Whites uh, for for a year, I believe. Um, played played fourth grade, fourth grade, straight out of school. Then they uh, Glenn Christini would bench him straight to first grade from fourth grade. When he went over to Vikings. And that for Quemium Whites. Oh, okay. And then 
He um, played a few games in second grade for the Whites, but then he went to Vikings and played uh, Colts, Captain the Colts, Captain the Colts in the grand final. Um, yeah, like. Uh, so they won the Vikings won the grand final then. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What? Against Queen and Whites. Oh, Queen and So who? Where was Glenn coaching then? Is that? Vikings. Glenn. 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 Glenn was went to to Vikings. And he asked a couple of players to go across to, to Vikings. And then, like, when Glenn come down here through to Parramatta, he asked a couple of guys to come through to Parramatta. Uh, he, like he so did, what did you think of that? I mean, is it... Look, we uh, believed in Caleb. Mm-hmm. And so whatever made him happy, it was we're hard. happy. Oh, it would be hard. I mean, you're talking, so you're talking about a first division club that was losing. You're not talking about a first division but club. But no, not just for that, just having him move away. Okay. That was the big thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't care that he was, yeah, no, as long well, as he's happy in his sure. football, because for him that's the only thing. So how many, how many times have you done the track from Queen down to, to, to Parramatta and all the grounds now? Have you worked that out over the last couple of years? I oh, look, I know my predicate got a few wax in the, through the motels. <laughs> so would you come down every second weekend? Like one time you come down there every... Now look, we, we come we come, we come here every weekend. Even if he was injured or not playing, we still come and support. We, we sort of like backed off a bit though when he was injured because we didn't, it just was unnecessary yeah. travelling. Or if some family members at home were a bit unwell, you know, like things like that. But yeah, yeah we have always come and watch, the time. play rugby or... Yeah. So what, having been here now a couple of years, so what's your feeling about like Parramatta Rugby? Is there a good... It's reckon, a warm club. I reckon it's fantastic. It's okay. really warm. I reckon the culture you've got here, and, and, and you got, look, you got beautiful young the men. Islanders, you got yep. the New Zealanders, you got the, the Fijians, you know, you got a few uh, European players in your club. I reckon that's fantastic yeah. and important, you know, because they bond. Everybody's bonding, and and the people that support this club have been very, they've been very welcoming to us from the day that we came in. Well, that's good, and that's it's good. just well, built that's, that's part of this part is to to, to make certain that culture. Makes you feel good. Starting, but I know Gerard wants to keep, yeah, yeah. coach wants to keep that going too. Yes. So what's the difference, as Caleb sort of mentioned, the difference between Glenn and Gerard or anything like that, or is he just, yeah, just kept on? Caleb keeps very much to himself. Caleb doesn't he tell doesn't, anybody anything. Caleb doesn't tell us anything on that sort of side of things. Like we have to ask he, Belle any questions. Yeah, and she doesn't tell us much either. <laughs> <laughs> I you find that up, Jan, what's going on with the club. <laughs> But with yeah, also Caleb's with Caleb's also with Caleb's rugby, mm. like we had we have some good family rugby connections too in the family, like the the Fiangas and and um, oh Bella you know, and Jack and guys like that. So Caleb's always looked up to them people. Yeah. So what what would what's his goal for this year then? Do you think ah, to play first the grade? Grand final. To play first grade? Yeah. Yep, and, and to play final. well and things like that. Yeah, because it's really difficult. I mean, it's not. Yeah, you're playing against sides, you know, uh, that have super 15 players, 16 players, you know, uh, Australian right. players, yeah. which is good to test himself against. But you know, yeah, but when you don't have those players yourself, you know, you can only yeah, yeah. Like he, look, Caleb, he he was very committed. He like at home as a young fella, he he he'd go and pass the ball through a tire, he'd go and run, he'd chip the ball, he'd, he'd do all those things. Even if it was 33 degrees outside, he'd be doing it. Every day. Every yeah. single day. He was so time. committed, you know, and still is committed. I know he goes into the ables and whatever he does. We enjoy I know him on the field, he's very aware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got well, a nice... We enjoy he like, watching him on the field. Yeah, like, he, he, he's, he, he likes to, um, he's got good vision, you know, like, I Beautiful believe in him. I've, I've watched, I've watched him pl- gr- go, grow, you know, like, rugby. Um, even Australian school boys coach approached me and they said, your son has a magnificent service game and just to top it off he's got a good rugby brain so yeah he thinks he's a thinker yeah I've, I've noticed that I think it's outstanding mm. okay I guess uh, in, in, in sort of finishing up is uh, anything else you'd like to add or say anything like that um, no but, you know you, you've told us about what you've noticed about the two blues or yeah you know. look like two blues is a great club um, Caleb had other opportunities as well but he came back here because he's loyal. He is a, he, Caleb's a loyal person. Well, you can person. see that from your family, so yeah. You know, so, that can be a strength of the weakness, Caleb. Yeah. But he also, well, yeah, but he also knows what his teammates are like. So that, that's important for him. 
that he's got that. Um, well, well, thank you for coming down today and, and sharing your family with us and uh, your, your, your beliefs and things like that, because I think that, that family is, is, is what it's all about, for sure. Yeah, and, and like you said, mate, what do we think about... We, like, so the Parramatta Two Blues, is, you've got great young players coming through the club, which is good to see. You've got a lot of depth there. And, um, but not just with the players, the people around the club are fantastic. Yes, um, and that's, that's, that's all we, 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 we love coming here. Love it. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right.